Um, so a little bit about our, about our program. It is a competitive grant application process that is administered by the California Department of Food and Agriculture. Um, currently, we are funded through the uh, Proposition 68, and the purpose of the funding is to provide financial incentives to agricultural operations to invest in irrigation systems that both save water as well as reduce greenhouse gas emissions uh, associated with their parcels. The uh, funding duration, um, so we received an allocation of $20 million in the Budget Act of 2018. Uh, we have we were planning on running two solicitations. One of the solicitations has already happened. So um, this second solicitation is opening uh, and is, look, is currently opened and is anticipated to be closing December 16th of 2019. Uh, there's a typo in the RGA which says 2020. Just please disregard that. We're not gonna be open for a, a year and a month. Uh, it, is, um, it is a eight uh, week application period uh, for this. Um, the project grant amount is not to exceed $100,000 per agricultural operation, um, and the project duration is an 18-month implementation plan, uh, which starts June 15th of 2020 and is looking to um, be completed uh, December 15th, 2021, uh, and that is um, subject to change, but uh, that is our projected timeline right now. So uh, we release the uh, RGA, the request for grant applications, um, and um, on August 21st of 2019, uh, so just last week, uh, and we have uh, already started receiving some applications, some interests about the program. Uh, we have a 10-week uh, application period, sorry, I, I misspoke prior, um, and we're looking to close December 16th of 2019. I think in spring of 2020, and the project start date of June 20, uh, I just went over. So, um, so the uh, one thing I would do if, if I was interested in applying to the program is I would visit the Sweep web webpage and look over the resources. Probably a great head start. Though so I guess you, you all are here or listening on the webinar, so that's another uh, great start uh, to being uh, showing interest in the program. Um, but there are some uh, resources on the website, including the budget, the greenhouse gas calculator, the irrigation water savings assessment tool. We have videos of awarded projects as well as videos of presentations we've done um, that will help uh, align uh, what's sort of what has been funded in the past to see if your idea might align with that. Um, we have FAQs, which we will update. Um, so in your packets, the folks that were fortunate enough to get a packet, um, and sorry that we didn't have enough. Uh, we, we were busier than we anticipated in the last workshop. So I'm really glad to see the interest, but uh, uh, there is a packet, uh, there's a piece of information in there uh, that is the frequently asked questions. Um, if you review that, uh, you'll be able to potentially find answers to questions that you might uh, you might have that weren't clearly defined in the RGA, um, but if you don't have an answer on there, um, we do receive uh, and we get feedback from the public. So if there is a um, cdfa.sweeptech at cdfa.ca.gov, it is in the RGA and there's a slide on it, so you have to write that down really quick. Um, you email that um, address, it goes to all of us. Uh, we will assess uh, the best answer we can for the question. And then we'll also update uh, the RGA or the um, FAQ list uh, so that the rest of the public can know about uh, our answer to this particular question. And we'll generalize the question as well. If you're really specific on your question, we'll, we'll get rid of all the, the specific information that sort of identifies the question. Um, furthermore, we have a list of technical assistance providers as well as the workshops that they'll be putting on. Um, CDFA is contracted with uh, technical assistance providers, including uh, her and the UC Cooperative Extension, so you guys came to the right spot, um, um, to assist with one-on-one -on -one application assistance. Uh, CDFA themselves will not uh, help you with one-on-one -on -one technical assistance for applying for the grant, so we've, we've contracted that with, with other en entities. Um, and then, like I said, the video of the technical workshop. I will show you the Sweep webpage later in the presentation, um, but I, I just wanted to go over that quickly. Um, here's a map of our technical assistance providers and the distribution across the state. Um, so you can see we have pretty good distribution from north to south. Um, so there, you should be able to find a technical assistance provider uh, somewhere in your area. We also have folks that are 
um, providing technical assistance uh, across the entire state, uh, which we didn't map on this because everything would be blue. Um, so uh, certain individuals will will provide assistance in that in that area. Um, so you can contact them, get one-on-one -on -one assistance, application assistance. Um, some of these individuals are going to be hosting workshops, and uh, there is a list inside the packets that we have, as well as um, as in uh, um, inside or on our website. So um, please reach out to them; they're a really valuable resource. So, uh, who is eligible to apply for a sweep grant? Well, California farmers, ranchers, and federal and California recognized Native American Indian tribes are eligible to apply. Um, um, so, it must be an irrigation project that is on Californians or on Cal California land. So, no Nevada projects, uh, anything like that. Uh, that produce food crops or flower crops is defined by the Food and Agricultural Code, Section 77911. So the reason that is important is uh, because currently under that code, uh, <coughs> cannabis cultivation is uh, not uh, eligible to receive funding, cannabis or, or hemp. Uh, just I want to make sure that's clear for anyone who might be interested in that market, that as it stands right now, we don't fund those, those kinds of projects. Um, uh, an agricultural operation uh, entity cannot receive a total cumulative sweep grant award of more than $600,000. That's because we've got undergone eight different rounds of this solicitation period, and some people uh, will receive funding uh, time over time. There's a set cap. So uh, each agricultural operation can only receive one grant per year, so of that $100,000. Um, and some folks are getting close to reaching that cap, which means they would no longer be eligible to continue to receive funds. Um, I, I don't know if that'll apply to anyone in here, but I, I want to make sure that's that's clear. Um, you can't build upon any previously funded uh, sweep project. So if you had, say, gotten a sweep, sweep funds in the past to put in uh, drip irrigation, and then you were interested in, say, installing solar and a, and a uh, soil moisture meter or something like that, um, on the same parcel, that wouldn't be allowed. Uh, once uh, Sweep has given dollars towards a, a specific parcel, we exclude that from receiving any additional funds. Um, an applicant must be at least 18 years or older in order to apply for the Sweep grant, uh, and projects must save water as well as reduce greenhouse gases. So exclusions, um, academic universities and research institutions, as well as state governmental organizations are not eligible to receive this funding. Now, that's not to say that K through 12, uh, community gardens, uh, you know, community, uh, small gardens for education purposes for, for K through 12 schools cannot receive this funds. Just we're not looking to fund, um, you know, UC Davis, not to call anyone out, but uh, for some irrigation project that they might be doing research on. Uh, and then you cannot combine sweep funds with uh, NRCS equip funds uh, for the same components. So that can be a little confusing, but I want to make sure this is clear. So if you apply for an equip grant, um, you can't recoup the, so equip generally pays for, you know, 80% of a particular component, uh, if not less than that. Um, so if you say you, you get an equip grant for a soil moisture meter, and let's just keep the math easy and say that was a $1,000 uh, moisture station and they paid you $800. You would not be able to quite to $200 in order to uh, install that piece of equipment. Uh, so you wouldn't be able to recoup the remaining funds when you're associated with an equipment grant. Now that's not to say that you couldn't have that soil moisture meter installed via equip and then also apply it to sweep to get drip system installed, something like that. Um, those those are allowable. I hope that's clear. So um, we are we do have uh, what's called priority funding, and um, this is for applicants that uh, receive a minimum technical reviewer score of 30, um, which is essentially 60%. I'm, I'll go into what a technical reviewer score is in a in a later slide. Um, but uh, you do uh, receive funding priority, and this is for if you are in a severely disadvantaged community, which is essentially a geographic location. And then a, uh, if you are a socially disadvantaged farmer as defined by the Farm Equity Act, 
of 2017, uh, which includes um, African Americans, Native Indians, Alaskan Natives, Hispanics, uh, Asian Americans, Native Hawaiians, and Pacific Islanders. Um, so those are our priority fundings that are that are mandated by the legislature. <coughs> Here's a map of severely disadvantaged communities that exist uh, across the state. Um, there is a tool on our website as well as in the application portal which will help you identify when you come to that step whether or not you fall into a severely disadvantaged community. And this is defined by a community whose annual household income is below 60% of the statewide average. Um, and that's based on a on census track level. So that's not to say that you yourself uh, get <coughs> below the statewide average. That's that I fall into a, a census track where the average household income is that, that amount. Um, and you just use the tool in order to identify uh, if you if you do or do you not fall into that category. And just to elaborate a little bit further, that's because part of our uh, funding requirements is contingent on us funding a certain percentage of our total dollars towards uh, severely disadvantaged communities. So if we weren't able to achieve that goal, we would get a uh, collective funding cut. So we wouldn't be able to fund as many people. Okay, so what kind of project types does SWEEP fund? Um, it's a pretty interesting, good question. So there is no you know one size fits all I mean, we know that uh, irrigation can be quite complex and there's a lot of different uh, nuances to it but as general uh, types that we see and we fund a lot and there are categories for uh, it is improved irrigation water management um, so the inclusion of soil weather and plant-based sensors uh, micro irrigation or sometimes a center pivot is uh, something if you're converting um, from something else that's pressurized uh, improved energy efficiency um, via a pump replacement or a retrofit, uh, fuel conversion. Uh, so if you're converting from uh, electric or a diesel pump or an old inefficient diesel pump to say you want to put in a new uh, high efficiency electric pump. Um, and then the inclusion of variable frequency drives, uh, low pressure systems, uh, the collective just reduction of pumping through many of these practices, as well as other project types that combine water savings and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Um, so that other category is sort of a way for us to capture other ideas that, that folks might have um, in order to, to fulfill uh, both water and greenhouse gas savings. So a little bit about the program requirements. You can only submit one application uh, using the operations legal business name or a unique tax identification number. Uh, if you don't have one of these, which is an FEIN number, uh, you can submit as a sole proprietor uh, which requires in the application at least for you to submit your last four digits of your social security number. Um, so there are two different means of uh, either a, you know, a corporation or a, a sole proprietor. Um, you cannot build upon any previously funded suite project it's assessing uh, impacting the same assessor's parcel number. I said that prior. Um, and then here's a, a good tip for you all. Um, all these projects need to either have a flow meter or demonstrate that they have the ability ability to measure total water applied on the parcel, um, either from the water supplier, or, and if you already have a flow meter, that's great as well, um, not a problem, but uh, you certainly want to make sure that by the end of your project, you have some component uh, that's going to measure the amount of water that's applied. Um, so, program requirements, um, you have to use the irrigation water savings assessment tool in order to estimate your water savings. Um, you have to use the Air Resources Board Greenhouse Gas Quantification Tool in order to estimate your greenhouse gas reductions. I'm gonna show you how these tools work, so uh, that's to come. Um, so the SWEEP Greenhouse Gas Calculator Tool is intended to assist an applicant in determining the greenhouse gas reductions from the estimated on-farm energy savings that is a result of the project implementation. Uh, and that should be, it should be clear when I show you how that works. Uh, and then in order to complete this tool, you need to have a pump efficiency test uh, taken for the pumps that are associated with the project. Uh, and um, also you, we need uh, energy records. So either we need one calendar year's worth of energy records, uh, whether that's diesel or electric or natural gas or however you get your energy. Uh, we need uh, some sort of supporting documentation to uh, support the baseline energy that you're proposing in your tool. So some of the program restrictions, um, SWEEP grant funds cannot be used to expand existing agricultural operations. So we, we don't want to see new acreage that's currently followed uh, being part of the SWEEP grants. Um, um, 
we don't uh, want to see the installation of new groundwater wells or the increase of that groundwater well depth uh, as far as part of the grant. Uh, no testing of experimental technology or or the engineering costs associated with the project design, development, and planning. And that's because this is a preliminary cost that uh, you would incur before when you're designing your project. And not, not everyone's going to necessarily charge you for a design cost, but we won't reimburse you for expenses incurred. So for example, you need to get a pump test. Um, you can't put in your grant that you want, like, we, won't, we won't pay that back. Um, we don't allow for least uh, weather, soil, or irrigation water-based sensors for irrigation scheduling. Um, and then the purchase of tools or equipment for the useful life of less than two years. It's sort of a, uh, yeah. Okay, so um, the solicitation process, um, essentially we receive the grant, applications are submitted to, that, to the portal. It goes through what's called administrator review. That's when we check the uh, merit or the feasibility. Is, oh, actually, that's not... Let me correct that. The administrative review is we essentially just make sure that you have the correct attachments and that they are filled out. So if you, for example, put on your greenhouse gas calculator but you forgot to fill it out, um, then we would not push that forward to technical review because you wouldn't have substantive information for them to compute. Um, we do see that sometimes folks will upload a document without saving it first, which causes it to not have all the information you filled out. So please save your documents before you upload them. Um, then it goes to the technical review. This is uh, conducted by um, UC, um, UC and CSU subject matter experts in the field of irrigation or energy efficiency. Uh, we have a pretty uh, great team of technical reviewers um, that are all um, quite, cl quite clever. Um, and they really check the merit and feasibility of your project to make sure that it can be completed within that 18-month uh, time frame, that you're using um, sound science in order to uh, suggest the project's outcomes uh, and sort of endorse it. And so unsuccessful applicants, which we hope uh, no one is, but we do have a fair amount of unsuccessful applicants. We are a fairly competitive grant, uh, just, just so you know. Uh, they do receive some sort of uh, feedback, um, which is uh, from the technical reviewer, uh, which kind of suggests what they could do to improve in the next round. So some of you folks who might have applied in the past might have received one of these these letters, which would uh, help guide you and what you can improve on uh, in order to be more competitive for the, the coming round. Uh, but successful applicants, which we hope uh, we're going to have many, um, will be notified that they're selected for an award, and then we essentially uh, initiate those grant agreements. That line, uh, there's a lot more to that line. Uh, we have to do pre-project consultations and a lot more, but for the simplicity's sake, that's, that's the broad overview. Okay. So when I'm thinking about making an application, I need to think about the kind of attachments I need to have up ahead of time. Um, so I, I would suggest you get a project design uh, set up. Um, you're gonna wanna complete your budget worksheet. Uh, if you're planning on installing a solar system, we do require a solar system quote. Um, that's the only component that we require a quote from a vendor on, uh, though we certainly would encourage you to get quotes from, from vendors in order to support your budget. You don't, you're not necessarily required to. Um, you'll need to have a completed sweep irrigation water savings assessment tool, completed greenhouse gas calculator, 12 consecutive months of baseline energy documents, and the pump efficiency test um, in order to complete that. Okay, uh, we're gonna go over the project design quickly. Um, what we want to see in a project design uh, is a labeled uh, assessor's partial number, so we're gonna wanna know where that, that field is. Uh, detailed schematic, in, including infrastructure and technology, you know, where you might be putting in your pumps, sensors, um, piping. Um, and I'll show you an example of, of next slide that, that uh, might be helpful. And then we really want a holistic project overview using aerial imagery software. Um, so there's a lot of ways you can do this, but uh, it's really not that hard if you try and um, I'll show you. I made this using I think I used PowerPoint and Google Earth. I just took a screenshot of it. And then with PowerPoint, I, I put a, you know, a border around the, the, the uh, field. Okay, so for this example, um, this is my APN, you know, and it, I'm proposing it's a 160 acre parcel, which it may or may not be. 
and that 80 acres of it are part of my project, which is that blue outline. And of that 80 acres, that's corn. Um, so what I wanna do in this is I'm going to be putting in a pipeline that replaces a ditch that runs along the, the border. Uh, I'm gonna be installing uh, two soil moisture stations, and that's their approximate location where they're going to, going to be, and that's you know important for when we come out and do the project verification, so that way we know where we're looking. Um, and then uh, a solar ET new electric pump, VFD flow meter. Those are all the uh, pumping stations. So I just kind of put that in that block down there. So uh, feel free to to be more elaborate than this, but please uh, try and uh, maintain some level of you know elaboration on on what's necessary for this. Uh, I would really encourage no napkin based uh, project designs, don't scan a napkin, uh, please. Um, okay, the budget worksheet. Uh, the budget worksheet is uh, has both columns and rows and when you see it, it might be a little intimidating, but actually it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so it has both supplies, equipment, labor and others. So supplies, uh, this is a, a sort of a state guideline in order to differentiate uh, pieces of hardware. We have things that are considered supplies, which is an item that's under $5,000 per unit. Uh, equipment is anything that's over $5,000 per unit. Uh, labor is labor and other is things that might not fall into those categories. Um, so uh, it must be consistent with the project design. So if you, if you say you're putting in two mo soil moisture stations, make sure there's two soil moisture stations listed on your budget. That's something that's going to be reviewed. Uh, and to the extent feasible, you can use the NRCS equipped payment schedule as a guide uh, to determine what reasonable cost might be. Uh, throughout the application, there there are it tells you what uh, payment schedule or um, practice standard there is for particular components. You could you could figure out what a reasonable expense would be associated with that fairly easily, or you can go get a quote from a vendor. Might be a more direct way to do that. Um, And there are, so if you look at the RGA, you'll see, I uh, did sort of go over that, the unallowable cost, the project design cost, we won't, we won't reimburse. Uh, and you have to make sure that labor is 25% uh, or less of your total budget request from us. Uh, uh, so, um, yeah, you, you wouldn't want to go beyond, you to be disqualified. Um, okay. So here is a snapshot of the budget itself. Uh, it is a little bit bigger than this, but I, I cut off some of the sections. So you'll notice there's both columns and rows. Um, and down the columns, there, there is a, a category. So there's irrigation system improvements, uh, and that includes supplies um, such as, as, I think it's gonna be your micro sprinklers, your drip line, center pivot uh, pieces, anything associated with your irrigation system improvements. So your irrigation water management is going to be for your flow meter, your soil moisture meter, your evapotranspiration station, something that might fall into that category. Pump and energy improvement, which is uh, solar. So if you're putting in a solar, you fill out that. Um, and um, there's another, another column, but this is just all I could fit in there and, and have you guys be able to see it from the from here. Um, so um, this is the uh, irrigation water savings assessment tool, and I'm going to go into this uh, in just a moment in a little bit more detail. Um, basically, say what it does is there's a before and an after tab. It'll give you a percentage of proposed water savings associated with your project type. Uh, and then you're gonna take that information and plug it into the greenhouse gas calculator. So they work together. Um, before I get to that tool, I wanna show you just some of the pieces of information for the greenhouse gas calculator. So the greenhouse gas calculator, you need to have um, like completed coffee, uh, explanations of the inputs that you used. Uh, so your energy records, um, Supporting documentation, we need that pump test, pump specifications, and energy records. Uh, it has to cover at least 12 months of the prior pre peak irrigation season. Uh, and the pump efficiency test actually needs to be within the last two years um, for, for us to, to use that. Um, here's an example of, an, of a pump efficiency test. And really the number we're looking for is the OPE, the overall pumping efficiency. Sometimes folks call this the pump plant efficiency, which is, it's essentially the combination of the motor efficiency and the bowl efficiency. Um, so you're looking for the, o the OPE. 
Um, and there's a couple other pieces. So the name plus the horsepower, we know it's a 100 horsepower pump. In this scenario, it looks like they're doing a pump retrofit. 57% is what it currently is at, at. It's overall pumping efficiency, but uh, 67 is what they're going to be doing once they get done with that. Uh, and there's also discharge pressure and PSI, which is other pieces of information that are useful when you're filling out this calculator tool. So here's a snapshot. Um, I will go ahead and just open it. But before I open the greenhouse gas calculator, the irrigation water savings assessment tool. Sorry to kind of jump back and forth, but uh, it'll make sense when I show it all to you. Um, um, so there's your instructions tab. Uh, read the instructions tab before you get started. It, uh, it tells you how to identify your soil type as well as your base, baseline township and range. Baseline township and range range is sort of a lot long. It, it's, it's a grid system that'll tell you where, where your evapotranspiration zone lands uh, within this, this system. Um, so you'll, you'll see those links here. And okay, so this is my before tab. And I want to know, well, it's just, I'm just going to make something up, but I have a loam soil. I am growing alfalfa currently. Um, my baseline is in San Bernardino, and I'll just say to north, 30 west. Um, right now, I'm using uh, surface irrigation, but um, let's just say I have low distribution uniformity because, you know, my, my field is unlevel. Um, there's, there's a lot of problems associated with it. And in my after scenario, I am interested in converting to almonds. Now, the reason I show you this is not perhaps to the particular types. It's because well, I do not want because I want to show you that it works. Okay, I don't know why you're not clicking. I do. I so that's a good question. Yes, I do need to make sure that I keep this the predominant soil type changed, and it does not want to click right now. I should enable it. I did enable it. Um, hmm. That's interesting. I clicked on the other pet tab. Okay. I swear it works. <laughs> it worked yesterday and the day before and every day before that. Um, maybe I can use my. <laughs> It's rather peculiar. Huh. Yeah, I'm, I'm really not sure what's going on with this. Uh, well, uh, try reopening it. Yeah, we can. Yeah, let's try. Give it another shot. Maybe this one. When in doubt, don't save it and launch it again. All right, um, enable content. So I'm just gonna say that back to loam, alfalfa, we're just gonna say Mount Diablo and low distribution uniformity after. Okay, good, it worked. When in doubt, restart. Um, so I make sure that you have the predominant soil type as well as the baseline township and range uh, selected again in the after tab, uh, though they are the same. Uh, the, the tabs work independently of each other, so it won't uh, replicate what you put in the tab before. And then now I'm going to go to almonds, and I'm going to switch to drip irrigation. Um, and I am replacing surface irrigation. So um, that will give me an output of my water savings of 41.44%. Projected savings associated with that practice. Um, this is just for the calculator tool. It's telling us, okay, so there's one other piece of information I want to, to tell you about, um, which is the uh, water management system. So, this is a pretty important section that I need to make sure is clear. Um, it is uh, associated with the increase in your irrigation water management system, not necessarily what tier your system is at. So, an irrigation water management system is defined 
as a flow meter, a soil moisture meter, and some sort of ET or weather station. So those three components make up a level three system. Um, whereas if I have, and let's just say in my scenario, I already have a flow meter and a soil moisture meter, but I'm looking to install an infield weather station. I think that's going to be useful for my, my practice, putting these almonds and, and it's going to work out great. So I'm really excited about that. Well, though that is technically an irrigation water management system level three, it is only an increase uh, from what my baseline was by one level. So I would select increase of irrigation water by one level in order to input that information. Now, this is something the technical reviewers do check. Uh, so I'll pull a fast one, it, it won't work. Um, and uh, it'll tell me my, my output information. So I still have that uh, 44, a 0.37. Um, Estimated water savings percentage. I would put that information into my application as well, but uh, we'll skip past that part. Um, and then I already I know that 44 is the number that my calculator is projecting. Uh, now I'm going to move into my greenhouse gas calculator. Read me tab again is very important. Please read it. Um, but uh, the, there's some key information that the calculator will not function if you don't put in information in this tab. So. Uh, it's particularly important that you put in the total irrigated project area, which we're going to call 100 acres for this example, and I'm going to be requesting 100 <coughs> acres. Um, um, okay, so the, I filled out those pieces of information. Everything else needs to be filled out as well, but those pieces of information are really important to the quantifications. So in this calculator tool, there are five different tabs um, throughout the bottom. And um, um, okay, so there, there are five different tabs around the bottom, uh, which is for five different pumps. Let's say I have six pumps on this proposed project. Well, I'm gonna use a second tool in order to quantify all six of those pumps. So I'll use five on one calculator, uh, one on the other, and then I'll add the number up with projected uh, greenhouse gas savings associated. Um, so in this tool, I have my ranch field name, which is called one. Um, I pump fuel electricity use, uh, fuel or electricity use. Um, so I'm gonna say I'm using 10,000 um, and I am using electricity, just in this scenario. I already have an electric pump. Um, and I guess the scenario we had painted was going from a motor rated horsepower of 100 uh, and then it's only if you know it uh, you don't necessarily have to fill this block out seven somewhere along those lines uh, pumping depth is where the water lies so I'll just say that it's 100 simplicity <coughs> sake discharge pressure so commonly commonly recorded in PSI is in heat in this scenario so um, there's an easy conversion in this conversion pressure conversion tab. You can click on on that. You can type in what your your recorded P, and then it'll convert it to the number that we're looking for. Um, and so, just new tip for you. And I'm just going to say it's 20 um, discharge pressure, 20 feet of discharge pressure. Uh, friction loss. So there's a default value associated with this. Um, there is is 10 for a well pump and five for a booster pump. This is associated with the the total friction loss associated with with the pump and we're going to say i have a well in this scenario and i was doing that retrofit and i think i went to 67 percent um i don't anticipate the well water changing pressure should be the same uh and friction loss same kind of pump so next question am i installing a variable frequency drive well you know, I kind of, I like variable frequency drives myself, so I'm going to put one on there as I'm doing the retrofit, and I'm going to install a well, well VFD, not a booster pump VFD, because this, again, is the well pump that in, in this scenario that I'm just painting for you guys. Um, so in my water savings assessment tool, I believe I had a 44%, is, it uh, takes whole numbers, so you can't use 44.3, uh, whatever it was, it, it'll round, so. 44% uh, and if I want to install a solar system I would put in the total kilowatts of that solar system 
Okay, one thing, it's a common error we see, uh, and I want to make sure this is clear. Um, it is for the kilowatts of the solar system, not the kilowatt hour of yearly generation. So, you know, if you're putting in 20 panels, you're not going to be putting in a number here that's a thousand. You're going to be putting in a number here that's 10 or, you know, something along those lines, eight, whatever the number might be. Um, but if you, if you see yourself putting in a really large number and you're not installing a megawatt solar system, you think again, um, because it's probably, you're probably thinking about it in kilowatt hours versus kilowatts. Um, and sometimes the quotes will tell you kilowatt hours it's going to produce over the year. Um, but not necessarily the kilowatts, uh, which you can actually calculate by looking at the quote, how much individual panel generates in kilowatts, multiplying it. Um, sorry, I think I went a little too deep in that, that avenue, but please uh, make sure you have the right uh, kilowatts uh, filled in here. I'm, say I'm putting in 10. Uh, and my new fuel type is, I have a little bit of solar power on it now. Uh, and so I have, the option to do additional pumps but in this scenario i just have the one pump and we're going to call it for the sake of your time and mine um now i get this summary uh, which tells me the greenhouse gas benefits per acre uh, 0 0.17413 uh, that's the number that i would put into the application um, and that's good that's great okay one last thing about this calculator tool is uh there is a definitions tab at the very very end all the way back there kind of well hidden very useful tab in uh, explaining what certain means. So you might not know what the overall pump efficiency is. It'll uh, give you a, a further detail about what's necessary for that. Um, yeah, so please check that out if you have any questions about it. Um, all right, I hope that was clear. Uh, I will take just a moment to see if there's any questions in the room about uh, the, the calculator tools or anything I've gone over and I will then continue and and go uh, deeper into other things but any anyone have questions about those tools all right that's great I'm so glad to see that I feel like I explained it well um, okay um, on the calculator if, uh, if we're currently irrigating just with well pumps, well irrigation, and for the project we plan on making a reservoir and then using a, a booster pump, that, that'll all go in there fine. So you uh, want to add a new booster pump uh, to to the project. Um, well, I would ask you how you plan on saving energy associated with, with that. It's sort of by the collective reduction of pumping from conversion from flood to drip right so you'll be saving your 30 percent or whatever that percentage might be for your crop and you want to then use a booster pump so you, you could presumably make that argument in your calculator tool um but uh yeah just be very thorough in what you're trying what you're proposing so that way it's clear to the technical reviewer about what you know that there is a new pump that's going in uh, associated with that, but the, the calculator tool will work that way. And there is an FAQ question that shows you how to do that. Um, yeah, okay. and if you can't figure it out, uh, please reach out to the, the technical assistance provider or one of us will, we can, we can. That's how I get to ditch water to get into the sprinkler system. Right, so you give some surface water Correct. supply, okay. And then you have groundwater as well from your, uh -huh. So you want to do blending and then and pressurization. Okay, yeah. I mean, we've seen projects like that before. So um, yeah, I would just encourage you to reach out to the uh, provider to, to get more hands-on you know, detail on how to do that. Um, I'm going to check online to see if there's any online comments uh, or questions associated with this. Yeah, I think we're okay. I hope the audio connection has been working for folks online. It seems to keep telling me it's dropping off and going back on, but um, I hope it's working. Okay, back to it. Um, sorry, I 
we have a long presentation. I'll do the technical review. We kind of went over that already. Um, but the scoring criteria, essentially, is, or the selection process is uh, the technical reviewer score, which is out of 50, you know, how you fare on that, followed by the level of water savings associated with the project. And that's on a per acre basis, not on a holistic basis. That's a way to make small farms equally competitive with large farms. Um, and then um, the level of greenhouse gases associated with the project. So scoring criteria, there are five categories, merit and feasibility, estimated water savings, estimated GHG savings, the budget, and additional considerations. These additional considerations are six points that you can get by default uh, if, you're, if, you find, if you fall into a specific area or if um, you uh, agree to a specific task. And I'll show you that right now. Um, so the additional considerations. Are you a previously unawarded applicant? Uh, so that's not, I haven't, if I've applied but did not receive the award, I would still be an unawarded applicant. I've never received the award. Um, so I get an additional one point. A provision of cost share, I have some amount of skin in the game. I'm, I'm ready to, to show that I'm part of this project. Uh, that's an additional point. A commitment to irrigation training is an additional point. And then reduction of groundwater pumping in a critically overdrafted groundwater basin. Now that is just a geographic location. So uh, either you fall into it or you don't, um, but uh, there's a tool, a mapping tool that will show you that. Um, now the implementation of soil management practices. Uh, so there is cover cropping mulch. Um, what are the compost and then there's like rotational it's what is it Cover cropping and crop, rotation. crop rotation okay yeah so there's the there's the four they're they're listed in the application i i'm sorry i always forget the the specific four uh you only have to do one of those practices in order to get the additional consideration um but it is uh something that we check when we do the project verification and then the inclusion of uh stormwater capture reuse or the use of recycled water which is a new requirement um, from our bond fund, uh, which we're pretty excited about. Um, so to see that. Um, okay, so I have all my information ready. I'm, I think I'm ready to apply. So I have on hand project design, budget, water calculator, greenhouse gas calculator, pump tests, 12 months of energy records, any other additional documents that I might have in order to support my claim. Uh, I am going to go to the web webpage. Um, we have switched over from an older model to a, a new application portal. Come on, there you go. And so this is the Sweep webpage. You're gonna see this apply here button. That's where I click to go launch to the portal. Uh, but before I do that, I wanna show you some of these resources. This is where you're gonna find the greenhouse gas calculator, the budget, um, past solicitation information, the irrigation training resources, also notifications of uh, FAQ is right here, where, we're had our, where we had our workshops, so we're in Bakersfield, we're wrapping it up. And then uh, technical assistance resources, these are pretty important, and I would really encourage you guys to, to uh, reach out to a technical assistance provider. So we have the community education specialists. Um, we also have technical assistance providers, um, which more or less do the same thing. But they'll, they'll provide some level of assistance. Uh, with you on submitting an application or going through the feasibility of your project. So definitely worth checking out, but let's go to the apply here now button. So I already have an account and I'm already logged in, but if you didn't, uh, you do a account creation at this step. Um, but that, you know, that's what's your name and you know, what have you, not very hard to do. Um, Eighteen applications. So right here, right ahead, from the technical reviewer, it said uh, you forgot to include the proper um, pump efficiency test for the pump you applied for, and that was the only thing that was wrong. Well, I can go in here. I can see what I was thinking last year, and then and review the technical reviewer's uh, feedback and then feasibly update my application uh, to, to be more current. This doesn't allow you to just resubmit. You would have to copy and paste and put into applications. We actually don't want it to. But that's how that function works. Um, and so, okay. 
In here, I have the ability to add another application, so I can apply uh, or I can generate different applications. If I'm a technical assistance provider, I can apply for other folks. Um, but for this scenario, I have just one application. I'm, I'm one guy, small farm, so um, here's my submitted application. I've already submitted this. Um, I have, you know, some more resources here, just sort of reminding me that I need all these components before I get started. And you know, <coughs> okay, so I, I do apologize for the very simplest, very simple application that I put in. Most of it's ones and zeros uh, for the sake of showing you that it works. Um, but there are the selection um, application information section, which is the first section. There's 10 different sections, 10 or 12 different sections in this application. I'm going to put in, you know, my name, if I'm a sole proprietor, the mailing address, um, contact information, if I have uh, a alternative contact, um, and just some kind of broad over information. So have I received a previously award? No, I haven't. Um, project overview. Uh, you know, actually, before I, let me, let me do this. I just want to show you what it would look like if you're in the edit stage because the edit stage is what you guys are going to be looking at. This looks just only slightly different, but there are these boxes you fill out. Um, if you see a red asterisk, uh, that means that it is a required field. So you have to fill that out in order to complete it. Um, so I have a project overview. This project will be great. I was very thorough. I'm probably not going to get selected for an award. I'll tell you that. Um, <laughs> But um, uh, project location information, so this is my county, my assessor's parcel number, GPS, you know, just pertinent location information, assembly district, uh, current irrigation system in practice. So right now I have flood, going to drip, um, project type. So if I'm gonna be including a soil uh, plant-based sensor, I, I can click yes, and there's this additional information. So if I say yes to this, I have to explain my a project type, my weather, soil, and plant-based sensor for irrigation scheduling components are going to be. I might say a flow meter. I'm putting in a flow meter or soil moisture meter. Um, if I say no, I can just move on to the next section uh, and continue on. So uh, proposed irrigation system practices, uh, project duration. This is essentially just confirming that I'm willing to complete the project within terms. Um, water calculator, that's where I put in my my attachment, I would attach my water calculator here. Um, one thing to keep in mind is we do have a file naming convention. Uh, so when I'm looking to attach my documents, I'm going to want to first put my application ID number followed by what the attachment is. So there, all these attachments are named the Irrigation Water Savings Assessment Tool. But before I save it, I put in this eight digit uh, code and that eight digit code can be found at the very top of my application right here. This is, my, this is my project ID number, um, and it's located throughout it. But So that's generally the file naming uh, structure we like. Uh, it's not required, but very much encouraged. It helps us a lot on the back end um, with the logistics. Uh, so please try and name those correctly. Um, water calculations, GHG calculations. This also looks like I'm using one kilowatt energy. So like I said, it's a horrible application. But um, Pump test, I put in all my attachments, additional considerations uh, if I'm going to be doing, if, my, if I fall into a critically overdrafted groundwater basin. One thing that's nice is, okay, I don't know if I fall into a critically overdrafted groundwater basin, I just I just live here. Uh, so I can click here and it'll launch a different website. It'll say, you know, are you willing to do this? You say continue. It launches it in a different tab. Um, so that way I don't lose all my information. And it shows me where the critically overdrafted groundwater basins are. You know, you'll get to that when you get to it. But um, I have a section for additional attachments. So if I want to put in quotes, supporting documentation, uh, I can put that there. And then my acknowledgement. Now I can save it. So let's say I get halfway done with my application and. It's dinner time, so I have to run off. So I save it as a draft, make sure I save it uh, before I, I let the program close. That way I don't lose my information and then I, I can go on with my day. So I'll save this for the sake of doing it. Now I saved it, but I need to make sure that I submit the application. So on here, I have to click the submit button. Now there's 
47 days remaining for me to submit this application. So I'd say I'm happy with it. Okay, so I'll click submit. And then, you know, hold on a second. I realize now I want to add a new component to this and I, I made a mistake. Um, I don't want to rewrite my whole application, right? I've already done all this work. I can click on this edit tool and I can recall it. So yes, you reopen the stage. Now I can edit it again, uh, change my budget, do, do whatever I might need to do. Um, and then just keep in mind that when you recall it, you still have to submit it. So it does need to be in the submitted folder in order for it to be considered uh, submitted within the time, time frame. Um, I hope that was a good uh, overview of the application submission portal. I do think it's fairly intuitive and linear. Uh, we've tried to make uh, good resources integrated into that system. So, okay. Uh, awardee requirements. So this is something that's important to know if you are selected for an award. We just want to make sure everyone's prepared uh, for what's necessary associated, what's associated with that. So we do a pre-project consultation. That's when one of us will uh, potentially give you a call, make sure that we're on the same page with what your project design, your budget, everything lines up with what we anticipate. We might um, request you know, additional information, say a solar quote if it didn't, wasn't there, or a new design if it wasn't clear enough, uh, and then we'll clean it up. This is after you've been selected for an award. Um, and you know, we'll also go over what's required, the, the, the overall process, um, but we'll get to that if you get selected. So um, then we do a post-project verification, and that's when uh, a, an environmental scientist will come out there and uh, can ch uh, check the project for completion and make sure that all of the components are installed in accordance to the scope of work that we, uh, we agreed to. Uh, we also do do post-project quantification. Uh, and that is conducted by either CDFA or a third party representative to evaluate project outcomes. I wanna make sure it's clear that uh, folks know that uh, what, what that consists of is we might uh, request both uh, water and energy records from you uh, to see uh, if the project has reached its targets. Um, so we won't, you know, if, if you're not reaching our, your targets, there's no uh, substantial consequence associated with that. But what it is, is that we um, we want to see how our quantification tools are working to make sure that we're in line with what we think we're in line. And we only do that for a subset of randomly selected projects. So if you get a call from us all over down the road, don't think you're being targeted. Uh, we use a random number generator and uh, we, we try and be as uh, random as possible in order to do that. Um, and then if you, uh, if you receive an award, you're expected to maintain the installed system for a minimum of 10 years. 10 years is considered the life of the project. Uh, it's based on our, our projected savings associated with them. So FAQs, I did go into this a little bit, but um, there's a, that packet in your, or there's a paper in your packet. And you can also download it here. We will be updating this periodically. So all the FAQs that we received by the end of the today, um, we will be post those by November 5th um, uh, so that everyone uh, can see what those are. So we will uh, regularly be updating these frequently asked questions. Um, and that's true, you know, November 13th, all of them need to be submitted by then, November 19th, so on and so forth. Um, but after December 4th, uh, we will not be answering any more FAQs. And that's just because um, <clears throat> we can't uh, post it to the, to the webpage any longer, and we need to make sure that we disseminate that information out to everyone, so not just directly to an individual person. So if you have a technical question, please get in ahead of that, uh, that deadline of December 4th uh, so we can assess it and let the whole public know and not just, not just you. Otherwise, that would show us uh, being sort of selected bias. So um, that's the email address down there. That's the uh, cdfa.sweeptech at cdfa.ca.gov. It's also in the RGA and it's all throughout the website. Um, so that's who you would email and it will go to all of us on, this, on the panel. Um, you know, we'll talk amongst our team, come up with what a uh, sensible answer is uh, and, and respond to you accordingly. So I have a video here of one of our previously awarded projects. It doesn't seem to want to work in my PowerPoint, but I think it'll work if I launch it from the web page. We're going to try that. Um, 
and then we're going to go into to questions. So um, I kind of just like uh, ending this this uh, this particular meeting with you know some inspiration about projects that have been selected. I, I like this particular video. Um, actually, I like all the videos. I've just. <laughs> I, To become productive in, in California agriculture, you need to expand, you need to grow, you need to modernize. When my grandfather moved here, he started on an 80 acre a homestead that was given to him by the federal government. My father farmed about 500 acres, 800 acres, and now I'm farming about 1,500 acres. My primary production is forage crops, and then secondarily, I grow a lot of seed crops. Wheat is one of the lesser crops that I grow, but it's a good rotational crop, and uh, and I chose that wheat for this project because the project finished in December, and it was one of the only crops I could plant in December. And uh, now we're going to harvest the first crop off of this subsurface drip uh, that was uh, provided with the sweet drought funding. The sweet grant is another tool that we use in our toolbox. It allows us to do things that aren't profitable at this time. It allows us to, to use state-of-the-art technology and, um, and allows us to do it on a large farm scale so we can use that data and use what we learn on the other farms. I'm a, on the board of directors for the California State Farm Bureau. I'm actually on the board for our local county farm bureau. So we spend uh, a week a year and we go back to Washington. You know, we're trying to feed the nation and if we don't tell our story, nobody else is going to tell our story. And if you get a family farm that goes back to Washington, D.C., you can usually gain a lot of respect and a lot of influence. I've already had a field day out here. I brought other farmers in to look at this to, you know, farmers are curious. In the last five, 10 years, water is becoming more and more valuable in the state. If we can apply less water, we can use that other water in other fields or in other areas of California. About the top six inches never gets, never gets wet, stays powdery dry. And as we start getting down a little bit lower, we're about six inches there, start picking up moisture. So there's various parts of this um, of this weather station, and we've got the solar panel that's powering it. You've got a backup battery system and, and, and data logger that's recording the, the information. And then you've got all these instruments here that are, they're actually measuring how much evaporation is going on in the crop. And they're, they're actually telling me how much water the crop is actually using at any 24 hour, 12 hour period when we're putting optimum amount of water on it at the, at the time, we're getting a water savings, plus we're producing more crop with less water. Without a doubt, the, this new technology is gonna increase yield. When you look out across this wheat field, even before it's harvested, it's very uniform. It's very same height. The grain is the same size. They're plump, they're filled up. So I anticipate a, probably a 25% yield increase and looking at it, it appears to be a very uh, good yielding crop. And then quality of it too. We, we grow a specialized wheat here. This is called a desert durum. It's only grown in Imperial and Yuma counties. And this wheat demands a very premium price. And we have to meet these high premium protein levels to get those prices. And with this drip technology, we're able to put fertilizer on it at optimum rates and at the optimum time and we, we probably will have very high, um, high testing wheat too. On average in agriculture, production it doubles every 20 years. And that's what keeps us ahead of foreign areas like Argentina, Australia, Brazil, and they're still behind us in our technology. 
between myself and my son and my son's kids now that are going to be fifth generation taking this farm over in another 30, 40 years. Um, it's still it's still something that we love to do. We're doing it because uh, it's we make money at it and we enjoy it. And it's a heritage that we're trying to trying to keep up, um, trying not to let my grandfather down what he started. All right. Thanks for, uh, oh, sorry, not the next video. I hope you guys like that video. Um, it was done down in Imperial County, um, if you didn't catch that. So with that, I will um, mean the, the, the team will take uh, any questions you might have in the room first, and then I will follow that by questions that you have on the webinar. Uh, on the webinar, you can either type your question out or you can uh, raise your hand and then I can unmute you and you can uh, say your question verbally, whichever you prefer. But I'll start with the folks in the room first and then we'll go to the, to the webinar. So any questions? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, what if you get your water to a water company and therefore you don't have to uh, this is a common question. Uh, so we do require, so the sweep program is focused on on-farm efficiencies associated with a pump. Uh, so your project might not be considered eligible for the program. Yeah, for that particular parcel, you might have other ones that, that, that would be, but that is not like an eligible practice. Yes. Okay, so the pump efficiency test, so if your plan is to install a drip, okay, you don't have a pump yet. You would use the manufacturer's information. So you're looking at installing a new pump. Uh, what was, what's your baseline information? So you, you, are you using flood irrigation currently? Yeah, so uh, this is another example of a project that might not be the most suitable for, for the sweep program because you don't have a baseline energy use associated with it. You're actually lifting a floodgate and flooding a field. Um, so you, you wouldn't have a pressurized system. So well, yeah. Do well water too. You do use well water, okay? So um, yeah, I would incorporate that. Uh, that, that so that particular pump. that particular pump would, would be the one that needs <coughs> a pump efficiency test. But yeah, it, sweep does not work for all agricultural operations, unfortunately. Uh, you would need some some level of baseline pumping in order to to qualify, which is why Imperial Valley actually is quite a difficult spot for us to target. Um, I know we're not there, but... Um, Could you use a baseline on a different orchard that you do have a drip irrigation system pump? Could you use that information? Um, how do you replicate that? You mean uh, you would do a pump efficiency test for this other pump and... Uh, I'm not quite sure I understand your question. Okay, so you, to install a new pump, as I said, you don't have a pump efficiency test on a product you haven't gotten yet. That's true. So you use the manufacturer's information. Sure. You did talk about baseline information from an existing pump where you're doing groundwater. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or could you use, uh, if you had pump information from current drip systems on other orchards? No, you'd want to use the pump information that's referenced in, in that particular okay. parcel. Mm -hmm. If it was there or if it wasn't, yeah. Uh, question back there? If I had two different crop types on a uh, parcel, like say, right now I've got a 40 acre block, it's 30 acres of alfalfa and 10 acres of plums, and it's all flood irrigated, and I'm trying to go through and put a drip system on everything, but also convert the 30 acres to citrus. Great. Would that be, would I do two different of the irrigation calculators and yeah. them both, or what's the best way to do so this? This is a great question. So you are only required to use your principal crop in order to calculate this. this. Uh, it sounds like alfalfa is the bulk of that. So I would also tell you that you can uh, use two water calculators and find the the average. And I think technical reviewers often see that as more favorable. Okay. Uh, so I would uh, tell you that the the documentation tells you that you, you only have to do your principal crop. I might uh, suggest to you that you choose not to. So you do both. There's a way to input both. So you know, you use two two calculators, and you'd upload both of them as, your, as part of your support. Um, okay. I just wouldn't there's a spot on that. I mean, yeah, so in, in, the app, in the calculator, you would not be able to calculate two different crop types in just one calculator. You would do it uh, twice using different calculators, 
and um, just extract that information to Excel to get a fraction in order to verify what, what the, the savings would be. Okay, so the disadvantaged community then is by census tract. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I did go out. Oh, um, that's a good question. Because I put in the address, and if you happen to be across the street from, because it just takes a small radius, if you're across the street from a farmer, a successful farmer, you have a very high income, <laughs> as opposed to everybody else that's in the community. Sure. Yeah. So it, what you would do is, so it is a visual map. You can find out, so I would type in my address, but then I would also know exactly, you know, what side of the street I was on or, you know, where my project is located, you know, from aerial imagery. And that will tell me whether or not it's just um, outside of it. And it does, it, you are required to actually physically fall into that land. So it is not, um, it is based on census track information and not your own your own income. Yeah. If you were just across the street, if it was just across the street as the SDAC, but on your side of the street you were not, you would be considered yeah, not. I zip code. Yeah. Okay. And it didn't really, although we it's our zip code, it showed us not being in that zip code, although we are. That's uh, kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So then I put in the address. Pardon? You have to put in the address on your farm. You have to put in the exact address. Which I did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you're not did it not pull up? It, 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 it's a very small radius that it yeah. gives you, okay, yeah. and it had a very high income. Yeah. That's because most of the farmers live right in that neighborhood, but the whole area is different. So it sounds like you might not, not fall into an SDAC on that particular parcel site, that particular site, I, I, just based on what you're telling me. Um, it's, it's, it's dependent on where the land is falls directly right so i mean i can show you the tool if, if that helps but um So, orange layers severely. We'll hide this. Just gonna zoom into. It didn't work. I'll just we'll just say that like I don't know where your farm is exactly, but I, I know I, I just wanted to show you a an example essentially not to target any one individual person but okay so um orange being sdac purple being dac white being neither uh if i fell right here i would be in a dac if i fell right here i would be in sdac if i fell here i would be neither now that's it's exactly where the pin would drop on a map where my house or the street next to me is i i, I didn't get to this part so i'll go back and look okay yeah Yes, sir. I have a question about uh, the CEQA requirements okay. and also about um, can taxes be included in a budget for large equipment and for, uh, in fact, paying for the sweep grant. So the sweep grant may be taxed. Okay, uh, so uh, to get to your, your current or your first question about uh, CEQA. So that was included into in our um, Prop 68 guidelines and CDFA is currently looking at trying to get a uh, programmatic exclusion and we're going to our legal office right now in order to find out whether or not we do fall into that category of programmatically being excluded from that practice um, I don't have a crystal ball so I don't know whether or not that will that will or will not be um, my understanding that we are excluded that's what the consultation I try to get on this review is that we are excluded but I need to get it from you <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah and we, you will when we uh, um, so when, as soon as we know, I, I promise you. I'm confident we are, and I'm, I'm glad to hear that you're heading. We're right. certainly looking into our legal team is certainly looking into that to to get clarity. You know, I'm.
I'm not a legal expert. I, I can't really make the call on that, but we are categorically exempt. The, the concern is that here we are spending money and then we spy and someone says something about FIFA and we look at that. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't heard about it before. So. Uh, yeah, I thank you for bringing it up. Uh, folks in the room should be aware that uh, there is the potential of, of CEQA requirements. I, I think it's, well, I, I shouldn't, I'm not a legal expert, so I, I do not know, but. Uh, the direction I've been given uh, suggests that we may not fall into that category. We may be categorically exempt, which we will we'll find out before these these particular round 2019 round round will be even executed. So at that point, you, you all should know. Document the question in your response or in your frequently asked questions, or somehow. Sure. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, Wesley, are you writing? Yeah, questions down. I have yeah. to say that this uh, same point affects current projects as well. But we're, you know, not telling them to stop their projects. We're optimistic. Um, everyone's like business as usual with their projects. And once we have more information, we'll. Yeah, this is our yeah. This is our eighth round of solicitation as well. So uh, I, I don't anticipate being a problem, but we shall see. I'll speak to the lawyers about that. Um, and I think there was one other question actually. Was it? But so taxes can be included in the price of a piece of equipment. So if I if I pay you know seven percent tax on a soil moisture meter, you might have an ag, ag rate that's cheaper than that. I could include my thousand dollar soil moisture meter with the or the seven dollars in taxes as part of my quote. That's how I would draft that. Oh, uh, our tax, our CDFA funds taxed. Um, that is a great question, and I would have to look into that um, to to get back to you. Do you. I don't know if either of you know the answer to that specifically. So we're told to have uh, recipients ask their tax consultants, as we can't give you any information that if it turned out wrong and screwed you guys over, that'd be bad. So uh, we're not experts on taxes. Um, that being said, we are trying to get. A more definitive answer. Yes. And if, it, it sounds like that's your fund. The last time I applied, you actually allowed it in the budget. So, that, but that was primarily for equipment. But now the thing is, one of my sweet grant uh, uh, applications is Jeepers Creek is under the 50% tax package, right? Is you're going to get tax on the sweet funds? No. You know, we've had we've awarded 725 projects over the last four years. and. No one has thrown a tomato at me at the street uh, because okay. I've taxed. I, I don't know if that's any if yeah, that's so any help. I, I think I think it is yes, but based on my experience so but, far. But I just want to be sure. Yeah, I, I, your tax budget. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Thank you very yeah. much. Um, hey, question. So if you're converting a, a diesel engine uh, to electric, and you're going to go from flood to subsurface, how how do you get your energy costs in? So um, what we see is people uh, putting in their fuel log record. So how, um, how many times they filled the tank that was associated with, with the particular pump and the um, the uh, capacity. So you, you want to know, oh, I have a tank right next to the pump seven times, that's 700 gallons. You can, uh, and I would encourage you to assess how much is remaining in that. So if I spilled it, you know, in um, oh, November uh, with 100 gallons, and then I check it in, you know, the beginning of the next year, and I've only burned 10 gallons, that's only I would have only used 10 gallons of that. So you would use your supporting documentation for fuel logs, fuel records, uh, and corporation with, or uh, including uh, some sort of justification about your last. Uh, so if you're buying an existing property and you're planning on, you know, doing this scenario. Is, is that will that be eligible if you still don't have those documents or you don't know how much you know diesel they've used in the last year? No, no, you you do need baseline information. You might be able to work with the land, the current landowner in order to obtain that information. But if you if you're unable to, you would not have sufficient support, supporting documentation um, for the the project. Okay. Yes, sir. Under uh, low pressure systems, is there like a cap on on PSI to run these systems? Yeah, it's a great question. I. No, there's there's no um, there there's the difference between say a a wheel line uh, the pressure that's associated with a you know a big gun sprinkler system which I don't think you have much down here I, I don't really know 
um, versus the pressure that's associated with a drip system. But there's no uh, uh, specific uh, metric cap that we have published as to what the difference really is. It's just like a, a, a larger pressure system. It should be fairly apparent that it is a, a large pressure system where your micro sprinklers and your drips are going to be considered low, low pressure systems. Okay, so sprinklers, jets, and drip, that's all that. Yeah, a solid set sprinkler um, might be considered uh, high pressure depending on the, the PSI associated with that. But but uh, for a micro uh, sprinkler, you know, which is so what... So for almonds, you don't have to do like a, a drip system. It could be a sprinkler. Yeah, okay. yeah, a micro sprinkler. Yes, sir. Hey, Scott. So last last year we were awarded the grant for the refiner to provide the CO2 to our almond crop. And this year we're going to be using, um, we have three other grants. And one of them I just thought I'd ask about. It's a natural gas fire well, and it's fairly large, 354 device. And uh, what we're looking to do is a natural gas fire blower uh, with these two gas pipes. And then feed the CO2 from the blower, that's natural gas fire, plus the well pump is much larger than the gas And then feeding about the pumps. Uh, and again, this is on mm -hmm. uh, and getting the increased 40% yield in the water base. So is that um, is similar to the refinery feeding the crops, but this is an actual well pump inside the water sure. itself. It's I, neighboring the clock, right? It, it so, um, as far as uh, somewhat more, I would call it unconventional practices for this new program, I, please don't misunderstand what I mean by that. But uh, that is really up to the technical reviewer to, to assess the feasibility of and the similarities of previous projects. Um, so, um, I can't really give you direct advice about whether or not that project is. Uh, is Eligible, I would say history might uh, support your claim. Um, uh, yeah, I hope that's helpful. Yes, sir. Any more questions on, on the cost share thing. Is all the cost share equal? Like, say I have a hundred thousand dollar project, and I say that I'm going to put in a dollar. Is that the same as? If I say I'm going to put in 99999 or whatever. Um, it is a single point for uh, in, in uh, any amount of cost share. Okay. But I would uh, also tell you that uh, the amount of cost share, you know, shows the amount of in infrastructure you're putting into your project. And so if you spend more money, you're going to be able to well, feasibly uh, calculate higher greenhouse and gas and water savings. But there, there is it's just one point for one dollar, one hundred million dollars. You can ask for as much money as you want on this, and it doesn't negatively affect you otherwise. Um, max out of the hundred thousand or whatever. The, yeah, your match does not. There's no. There's no required um, uh, range of match, and it it wouldn't change the additional one point that's associated with that. It might change uh, how the technical reviewer views the project as a whole, uh, because, um, well. You know, if you look at a three hundred thousand dollar project, two hundred thousand dollars to match, they're putting in a lot more infrastructure, um, just on a whole versus the the one dollar. You know, yeah, I think you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that discounts the single point that's associated with additional consideration. Yes, sir. So just to follow up on that question, I mean, one of our projects is with a very large power plant that happens to be in the middle of orchards, and uh, it's, it's electric power plant, natural gas fired. I mean, they're talking about a facility that is in the range of multi-million, two to three million. But a hundred thousand dollar grant doesn't matter that it's just going to be a small fraction because we're also going to U.S. Uh, Department of Energy for funding for this project. But we can get the funding, um, even though it's a, small, a large project, large national fund, a hundred thousand still that. A hundred thousand dollars is still the max for a sweet grant uh, per round. Uh, and the impact of the additional consideration of that one point, uh, it, it's only based on you know one dollar to a hundred million dollars uh, that additional point. But but the feasibility, long term feasibility of your project um, more, more might more. might have you know more weight in the the merit feasibility or other technical aspects associated with the scoring of that project. Uh, so you know I think uh, yeah it, it's not it's it's not a um, 
a bad thing at all to have a large amount of matching funds um, for for any kind of project. I, I hope that's clear. <coughs> One more point. So it, there is like a pre <coughs> pre project inspection, so I, you can't start anything. Uh, if, uh, grants aren't awarded until next spring. You can't start anything before that. Right, yeah, you would not be able to uh, start anything that would be reimbursed before that time frame. We wouldn't want you to start any part of that project before, before we, um, we award that project. Would it be okay if you're switching from alfalfa to cotton to destroy the alfalfa and sit on open ground that's followed until the funding for the project for the almonds right, comes yeah. in? So you'd be in, you would not, so to be clear, we wouldn't consider that to be fallow land, we'd consider that to be in transition. Okay. Right. So yes, you can deal with in transition land. We will not fund fallowed lands, but your in your scenario, you can have a plan to transition. Okay, I'm going to take some of the questions online. Um, sorry, folks online. I appreciate you being patient, and um, I will first do the. Okay. Okay, I think, is a pump efficiency test required if we are not planning to replace an existing, I think it's gonna say an existing pump. Um, did it tell me down here? Oh, replace an existing. Yes, oh, so uh, Chris, uh, to answer your question, yes, a pump efficiency set, test is still required even though you are not replacing a, a pump. It is part of the uh, greenhouse gas quantification tool and so it helps establish the baseline of your overall efficiency. You would are required to have that uh, piece of information. Will I share this presentation via our website? And yes, uh, Nathan, I am planning on, when we get back to the office, uploading this presentation uh, to the CDFA webpage uh, for folks that were unable to attend the webinar uh, or who might want a refresher to be able to review um, and that's pending its quality. Uh, I will make sure that the audio is is sufficient, but um, that is our anticipated plan and um, for that. Can you talk about the technical assistance providers and how an applicant can best use these during their proposal of the process? Okay, so um, we have uh, we, we have partnerships with various organizations, uh, the UC Cooperative Extension, uh, local RCDs, nonprofit, um, the um, uh, other uh, academic institutions, uh, and you can find a list of those resources on the SWEEP webpage. Uh, they are available for one-on-one -on -one technical assistance. Uh, to you know, to help you answer answer questions, uh, application assistance, uh, potentially help you with the quantification methodology or tools associated with that. Something things that CDFA themselves cannot do. Um, they they uh, will assist with that. Now I would go to the Sweep webpage and uh, view one that's in your area, maybe one or two, uh, and uh, reach out to them. Um, you might, there's also a list of the workshops that are associated that they'll be putting on. So um, you can reach out to them uh, via that uh, question as well. You? Oh, um, also, you guys have the, the community education specialist and the technical assistance providers separated, but we also provide technical Right, yeah, and, and you guys actually technically are in the technical assistance category, but yeah. you do we do differentiate you uh, from our different contracts. We've established different contracts with different agencies, uh, but please also reach out to the community outreach specialists. They are a great resource and they were very grateful, gracious to host us today. Um, so I, I, I don't know. Okay, let's see. Come on, then. Uh, okay, well, I'm gonna kind of read what you said. Our proposal, our potential project would install a subsurface drip irrigation system on a dairy to deliver water and lagoon nutrients to silage crops uh, for significant water savings. This is an equipped, approved practice. As a point out, should we look for funds in proportion? Okay, so I think you're asking if you if the project would be available um, potentially um, 
allowable for the sweep grant. And yeah, of course, um, no problem with uh, the conversion of uh, some sort of irrigation method to subsurface. If you're able to quantify both greenhouse gas and water savings associated with the project, uh, we are not, um, say, uh, crop style specific. Um, so if, if you are a dairy, but you're also growing those silage crops, there's no problem associated with, with that proposal. Um, you might wish to reach out to a technical assistance provider and provide more detail about what might be. I should qualify. So you are replacing, I should, um, you're replacing a flush irrigation system, um, which I'm assuming is uh, like a furrow irrigation system. Or are you flushing uh, pack barns and replacing with SDI? So you would want to, um, Make sure that you're able to um, increase the water use efficiency and greenhouse gas reductions associated with the baseline irrigation practice that's associated with your project. So if this water was used for, for flushing your, your pack barns, it's not considered uh, irrigation water at, at that point, but it would be once it goes to your lagoon, it's you know, pressurized into a, however you might distribute it um, through the field. Um, uh, can in kind our labor be used? Yes, of course. Uh, so Chris asks uh, if uh, in kind uh, their own individual labor can be considered some kind of cost share. And the answer to that is, of course, uh, yes, uh, not a problem. Uh, you would want to make sure you include that with the estimated hours associated with what and the practice that you're looking to incorporate uh, within your budget. Um, but uh, we do allow for both uh, cash and in kind contributions uh, as a form of cost share. Um, I'm going to see if anyone has their hand up. In, oh, I have a hand up here. Uh, Nathan, I, uh, I don't know if you, I've answered a couple of your questions, but I'm going to unmute you uh, so you can feel free to answer or ask any question that you might have um, and um, help you ready. So I'm unmuting you right now. Hey, Nathan, can you hear us? Nathan, Nathan, you, I don't know if you meant to have a uh, audio a question or if you were just planning on typing, but um, do you have a question for us? All right, um, go ahead and raise your hand again if you do have a question. I will mute you, I want to click to mute. Okay. All right, computer. <laughs> um, I don't know why it doesn't want me to mute him, but hopefully, oh, there you go. Everyone's muted. Let's just make sure I have no more hands up. And I don't see any additional questions in the question box. Uh, so that being said, are there any additional questions in the room? Uh, or we can wrap this up and thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks for having you guys.